I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you an excellent question on finding number of factors. In this video, I will actually share with you a way to find all possible number of factors for any number, howsoever big it may be. We'll begin with small numbers and then find number of factors for this number 2520. Now that was given to me by my student and let's to appreciate the concept, I've taken up two smaller numbers, correct? So let's find how many factors 24 has, how many factors 64 has, and how many factors will 2520 have, right? So as we learn few concepts to find factors, we could do a rainbow kind of a structure. 24, we know is like 1 times 24 is 24, correct? Um, 2 times 12 is 24, perfect. 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times 6 is 24. And then 6 times 4. So these numbers repeat. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that gives us 8 factors, right? So it's just 8 factors. Perfect. So we found by listing out all the factors and this is a good process but it works only when we have small numbers like 24 or so right two digit numbers it can work well well here's another technique which i'll show you uh, and this is kind of unique i will use it for 64. so what i will do in this case is i'll find the prime factors for this right so we'll do prime factors so i use this process of ladder division kind of thing right so so we'll use this ladder division uh, and then we'll find all possible factors of this one so how do we do it we'll keep on dividing the 64 by small numbers right of course not one but we can do two so when i divide 64 by 2 i get 32 then again by 2 gives me 16 again by 2 gives me 8 again by 2 4 and this 2 and then again by 2 one good job so you can see we have all the factors listed in this fashion it gives me one two three four five six seven factors so we have seven factors do you see that seven factors so we found total number of factors for 64 are seven now what should we do with two five two zero that's a huge number right so let me try this out and see what really happens, right? So, so we'll try this process out and then see, uh, can we count, right? So, so let me just try this out. This is a beautification of what we are going to do and gives me some time to think, right? So how should I go about? So I don't know really how to explain. So I'm thinking about it. So we have this number 2520. So let's again divide by 2, which is 1, 2, 12 is 6, 0. Then again by 2, 6, 3, 0. It's just do half of it, 3 and 1, 5. And then, well, this time, 2 is not going to work, uh, but 5 can work, okay. So we'll do 5. 5 times 6 is 30 and 3. And 63 means 3 will work. So we have 21. And then again, 3 will work, which is which is 7 and then let me write 7 and 1. Well, so we have all the list of factors here. Is it possible for you to count them and then get the answer? So you say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And uh, well, this is, seems to be same. You said 9 and 10, 11. Like this, you can kind of count and uh, you will not be very sure whether you got the right numbers or not. It requires a uh, lot of work here, but here's a trick. So, so let's learn the method. This is extremely important method. So what you notice here is that I could write 2520 as product of these numbers. How many twos do I have? Let's see. So what I have here is, as far as the twos are concerned, we have one, two, three. So three factors of two times how many fives? One. How many threes? 
two. How many seven? Just one, right? So what we do here is we list out all the factors and how many times do they occur when we do this kind of prime factorization. Now to find the total number, let's call that total number to be n. n. n is actually related with these exponents. So if it is 3, I write 3 plus 1 times. If it is 1, I write 1 plus 1. And if it is 2, I write 2 plus 1. And if it is again 1, I write 1 plus 1, right? So that gives me total number. So it is 3 plus 1 is 4. And then times uh, 2. And then times 3. And then times 2. That should be my answer. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. Times 2 is 48. So what I get here is 48. So my answer for this is that we have 48 factors of 2, 5, 2, 0. Now, I may be right, I may be wrong, uh, but that's what I get. Now, how do you confirm that this rule works? Well, we have two correct results here, which we counted. Let's check with those results. Okay, that's a good idea. So, so if I do prime factorization of 24, what do I get? Let me redo all this process, okay? So I'll again make this kind of a tree. I mean, okay, I have enough space here. So I'll, let's do it here. So we'll do it here, right? So we'll see. Okay. So what we have here is 24. We divide by 2, you get 12. Divide by 2, you get 6. Divide by 2, uh, you get 3. Divide by 3, you get 1. Okay, so that gives you uh, two, one, two, three twos, right? Three twos, okay. So we get two cubed times one three, right? So three to the power of one. Now I'm saying that the value of n is equal to three plus one times one plus one, which is four times two, eight, that is perfect. It works. So, so the trick works, right? So it works. What happens in this case? Well, this is simple. How many twos do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we could write this as two to the power of six is 64. But the trick is you have to add one, right? So, so the answer here is six plus one. Do you see that? And therefore, we have total of seven factors. It works. Do you see that? So we have found a rule which is just do prime factorization, list all the factors with their occurrence, how many times as an exponent and product of one plus exponent of each. Three plus one times one plus one times two plus one times one plus one gives you total number of factors for that number. You get an idea, right? So. So likewise, you could try with some numbers and see if it works. I'm Anil Kumar. If you like it, put some likes. And of course, share it with your friends and feel free to write comments. Thank you and all the best.